Welcome to Independent VFX. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at creating realistic aircraft scenes inside Adobe After Effects using Element 3D and Jetstrike. Here's the shot we're going to be working on. Now, before we get started, let me just say, I know this shot isn't 100% real looking, but it's not too bad for a shot done inside Adobe After Effects with no ray tracing and no radiosity. For those of you wondering how the shadows are done without ray tracing, we'll be covering that towards the end of this tutorial, so stay tuned. And if you're wondering where the sound effects come from, well, they're part of Video Copilot's flight kit, which you can get with Jetstrike if you opt for their Skypack bundle. Right, so on with the show. What you want to do before you get started is do a Google search for images of the real aircraft that you're using in your scene. In our case, it's an F-22 Raptor. These reference photos will give you a very good starting point and you can refer back to them whenever you need to check your progress against the real thing. You're only ever as good as your reference photos, so it really pays off to find good reference photos that you can keep comparing your work to. Let's get started. Right, so here we are inside After Effects and what we've got here is I've just pulled in a still that comes with Jetstrike. You'll find it in the resources folder. This particular one is called Aerial 06 and I've just placed it in its own comp. Now what you want to do is take that comp, drop it into another comp, and then make this comp settings to be HD or whatever preset you'd like to use. So I'll go with HDTV 1080. Uh, there we go. Duration, let's just make this comp seven seconds. I happen to know the shot is seven seconds long. And then I'm going to scale the still down so it fits the comp better, probably to around there. Um, and I will maybe just move it up a bit somewhere there. Now, the first effect we want to do, which we have covered before, is we want to use the corner pin effect to fake some motion in the still. So make sure you've got it selected. Go Effect, Distort, Corner Pin. What you want to do is you want to grab this bottom left pin, drag it a bit left, and this top left one you can pull in a bit. You'll see if you pull it too far, you start to see the edge. So just bring it back to there. Open up the effects controls and keyframe all pins. And go to the end of your comp, end of your seven seconds, move this pin back to where it came from and the top left one, grab the bottom right pin, drag it out, grab the top right one, drag it in a bit, again you start to see it so let's back off a bit, around there. Um, and if I do a RAM preview of this now, you'll see what we're getting. Let me just zoom in and here's our RAM preview. And there you can see what we're getting. Um, a really great effect. It really feels like the foreground is moving faster than the background, creates depth in the image, and it gives the illusion that we are flying. So let's get element into the scene. So I'll go layer, new, solid. I'll just create, I always like to use a black solid. I'll say OK. Let me hit enter and name this element. There we go. And to this I'll apply effect video copilot element. Click scene setup. Just resize elements so it fits into the display. There we go. And from the presets, if you have Jetstrike installed, you'll find Jetstrike here. Click on Jetstrike and then browse down and choose whichever jet you'd like. In this case, we're going to use this F-22 model called Fighter Jet 2. So I'll click it and there it is. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to enable the environment in the background and I'll stick to the standard default environment. So there is our jet, really great model, and I'll just say OK at this point. And there we go, there's our model in the scene. What we want to do next is create a camera for the scene, so I'll say layer, new camera. I'm going to just use a 50mm lens because I feel like that lensing works quite well uh, for the angle of this background image, so focal length 50mm. What's quite important for this scene is to use a two-node camera because that way you can orbit the camera around your jet model, but more on that later. So let's say OK. Right, so what I want to do next is I want to just create a group null 
for this aircraft. If you don't know about group nulls, you can find out more about it uh, on the tutorials on Video Copilot's page, but essentially it lets you use a null object to control the position, rotation, and scale of your 3D objects. So what you do is you open up your group parameters, and under here, under group utilities, there's a function create group null. Click it, create, and it gives you a null. Now I'm gonna rename that null to F22 null, and I'll just put that above my element layer. And then what you'll see here is if I open up the transform properties for that null, so if I rotate this null, it applies that rotation and positioning to the aircraft model. So I'm gonna start by moving this aircraft closer to us. Um, so the Z or Z axis you will bring towards you. So I'm probably gonna to wanna to bring it forward to probably minus 1,300, maybe a bit more around there. And then I'm gonna rotate my aircraft through 90 degrees so it's traveling sideways like that. And then looking at the perspective of this background image, um, I wanna just rotate the x-axis a bit, so I guess somewhere around there. So let's move on to getting a decent lighting setup to start moving towards realism. So I'm gonna add a new light, layer, new light. Um, and I'm gonna start by adding an ambient light, which is kind of your general fill light. So I'm gonna use an ambient light here under light type. And the color I'm gonna to set to this kind of sky blue that you've got in the background here. So you can even, you can pick that blue if you like. Um, and intensity wise, that light's gonna be quite dim around 50% somewhere there. You can play with these values later. So there we go, we've got our ambient light in the scene. I'm gonna rename it to ambient. Next, I wanna add my key light or my sunlight. So I'll say layer, new light. I wanna use a point light for this. And now I wanna give it a slightly yellowish sun color, probably somewhere in this area there. So okay. And you need to play with the intensity of this light. Uh, I know from experience that it needs to be about 10 times brighter than your fill or your ambient. So I'm gonna just jack this up to 500. Then, you know, if you look at the scene now, the light doesn't seem to be having much effect, but that's all to do with where it's positioned. So if I open up the position properties for this light, um, I'm gonna just scrub it higher up in the Y axis till it's sort of at the top of the frame there. And immediately you can see the effect it's having on the body of our aircraft. Um, and the next thing I wanna do is probably bring it towards us. This aircraft's a little bit too backlit. So I will scrub it in the Z axis towards the camera until I get a pleasing result. And that's really up to you in terms of what a pleasing result is. Personally, I think somewhere around here looks pretty good. And looking at this now, I think the light could be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna just put it up by 50, so 550. There we go. Right, so that's where we're at. Um, looking at this, I think this background image looks a little bit magenta or a little bit red. So I'm just gonna apply a photo filter to it to remove that. So I'm gonna go color correction, photo filter. By default, it warms the picture. Um, like I said, I felt it looked a bit magenta, so I would need to add green. So if we browse down in the list here, there's green. There we go, and I feel like that's a more neutral, realistic looking image. Maybe 25 is a bit harsh. I'll take the value down to 20. There we go, very happy with that. Um, and looking at my aircraft, I feel perhaps it's a little too neutral gray. So I will click on my element layer and say effect color correction photo filter. And this time I'll use a cooling filter on that aircraft. So under the presets here, I'll try this one. Wow, it's a bit harsh. Uh, I think I'll need to drop this value right down. Just say 5%. There we go, very happy with that. Uh, just to cool down the grays in our aircraft a bit, you know, as if they're receiving illumination from this very blue sky. And then the next thing I'll wanna do is I will apply a levels to my element. 
effect color correction levels and this is really going to just allow me to kind of play with these levels if I'm not quite happy with them so I can maybe crush these shadows just a fraction more um, maybe also work a bit more darkness into my mid-tones so let's say I was happy with that and this is this is a good time to start referring back to your to your reference images now this reference image you know our shadow areas are completely black uh, if we look at our After Effects comp we're not quite there yet but what we'll come and do is we will apply a grade on top of this whole image so let's go ahead and do that right now so I'm gonna apply layer new adjustment layer on top of everything and to this, I'm going to apply Effect, Color Correction, Levels. And here's where I want to probably pull my highlights in. I want to crush my mids. And by crushing my mids, I'm already losing detail in my shadows. Um, to me, that's looking pretty good. Then I'll also saturate my colors a bit more. Effect, Color Correction, Hue Saturation. And I'll just start ramping my saturation up to somewhere in the 20s, probably. Let's go 20. And then I just want to play with the color balance in this image a little. Give it a bit of a grade, color correction. I like to use this color balance, and I want to work just a bit more warmth into my highlights. So under the controls here for highlight red, I'll just pull that up a bit. Probably there, maybe a bit more. Let's try 10. That looks good. And then my shadows, I feel, are a bit purple-blue, so I'll just work some green into my shadows. Let's start with 5% or 5 and see what that does. Mm, little more. That looks pretty good. If I just switch this on and off, you can see the effect it's having. So I definitely prefer it on. Right, so that's a fairly basic lighting setup that gives us pretty realistic results. And of course, the grade on top of that just serves to help with the realism. Now, that's it for part one of this tutorial. In the next part of this tutorial, we will move on to animating the camera and animating the jet to further enhance our shot. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott Newman. Be sure to subscribe and stay updated. Cheers.